You're watching King 5 News. History is made tonight in Seattle as the city elects its first female mayor since way back in 1926. A new balance of power could be coming to Olympia as Democrats appear poised to win back the state Senate. So we have results of 600 races. You can find the results scrolling right now at the bottom of your screen. Also on King5.com and the King5 app. King5 though has called the Seattle mayor's race tonight. At this point, Jenny Jerkin has a big lead, 61% of the vote. And King 5's Chris Daniels has been with Jerkin's campaign all night. Chris, celebratory atmosphere there, I would imagine. Yeah, there was a theme here at the, yes, indeed, uh, here at the Westin in downtown Seattle. The song blaring over the speakers, Beyonce, who runs the world, girls. A woman will be the mayor of the city of Seattle the first time, as you said, since 1926. Jenny Durkin, a 21-point lead after the first ballots dropped tonight. King 5 has called it. She will be the next mayor of Seattle. She addressed her supporters here at the Westin. A packed house, including three former Seattle mayors and the current Seattle mayor, as well as several dignitaries. They listened. I saw, in fact, Jan Drago, a former Seattle City Council member, openly weeping on stage at the history being made here in Seattle tonight. I had a chance to talk to Jenny Durkin about what it's going to be like for her to transition into the mayor's office. As you may know, if you have followed this story, she will have a relatively short transition and will assume power here later on this month as soon as the results are uh, qualified by the King County Elections Office. Here's what she had to say about that quick transition. You know, we've been thinking about this since I got in the race, and we'll have a team in place, but we're not going to try to do it all at once. We will have a, a, a transition that is orderly, that makes sense, and it's not just going to be change for change's sake. We're going to make sure that as we make these changes, they're all about one thing, and that is making progress on these really tough issues and seizing the opportunities. Seattle's a great city, and we're going to make it even greater. All right. She talked a lot tonight about Bertha Knight Landis, who was the mayor back in 1926 in Seattle. If you have followed Seattle City politics, if you've been to Seattle City Hall, you will know that a room on the first floor of City Hall is named after Bertha Knight Landis. Jenny Durkin will now have the top floor at Seattle City Hall. For more on the mayor's race, let's turn it over to my colleague Natalie Swaby, who is at Kerry Moon headquarters. Natalie. Oh, Chris, you know, we were here tonight as Carrie Moon spoke with her supporters in this room. Now, she left here about an hour ago, and most of the supporters have headed home, too. The message from Moon's campaign tonight is despite Jenny Durkin's big lead, they say they are not out of the race yet. Carrie Moon stood at the front of the room here and said that they were up against tough odds. They say Durkin's campaign outspent them by more than three to one. Tonight, she thanked all of her supporters and said Seattle late voters may surprise everyone. She added her campaign believes ballot counts will swing in her direction over time. Here's more of what she had to say. Seattle voters won't let the future of our city be sunk by status quo thinking and politics as usual. There's too much at stake. We look forward to the next few days of ballot returns. And thank you all so much. And let's celebrate together what we did. But, you know, we've seen people come back from less than that. And we know that the majority of voters that voted early live in precincts that went to Jenny in the primary. And we're really, really hopeful that the thousands of people that voted today are Kerry voters. And that woman you just heard from, Carrie Moon's communications director, not accepting defeat at this time, saying that she wants to wait and see the final results. Live in Seattle, Natalie Swaby, King 5 News. Our King 5's political reporter, Natalie Brand, and Seattle University professor Marco Lowe, they both join us right now. So were there any surprises with this particular outcome? Well, I think the margin tonight was certainly a surprise for both of us, right, Marco? Absolutely. Uh, and while we've called the race, these numbers are expected to change a mm -hmm. bit 
the, the trend line is that later voters tend to be more progressive. Do you have any predictions on what this could end up being? 43% uh, probably for Carrie Moon and the rest going to Jenny Durkin. What I'm really interested to see, and I'm sure you are as well, is the, the voters who supported other primary candidates. Nikita Oliver, third place mm -hmm. finisher, had a lot of support and momentum. Mm -hmm. A lot of those voters were energized, less enthusiastic heading into the general. So did they sit this one out or did they finally pick a candidate? I think they picked, but I think people went in many different directions. I mean, you had people in the race like Jess and Farrell that might have been a little closer to Jenny Durkin on the political spectrum. So voters just took a new look and we saw it come out tonight and Jenny Durkin just ran a really excellent race in the general. Yeah, and a, and a great campaign as well when mm -hmm. it comes to campaign mechanics and infrastructure. Uh, between the money, she was doing a lot of neighborhood tours, dozens of neighborhood mm -hmm. tours across the regions. And you could really see her, as you've noted, grow as a candidate and be able to recite different things she's heard in different neighborhoods. Uh, the campaign adapted. As she was being attacked from this flank by Carrie Moon, she had a message to hit it directly square on. I'm not owned by corporations. Here's my record that proves it. Really well-run messaging campaign. And as Chris Daniels touched upon and even asked Durkin about, she is going to have to really get down to work this week and get her office in order because she will be sworn in November 28th mm -hmm. when election results are certified. You know what goes into a mayoral transition having worked in mayor's offices. So just kind of set the scene for us in terms of what she's going to have to walk into. She's going to have to outfit 40 people that she has to trust with her career and first term incredibly hard to do in the usual time, let alone three weeks. And every department head, she has to decide, are they gonna stay, are they gonna go? So it's really, it's unreasonable. I think you're gonna see transition roll through the winter and maybe even in the next year. And that should happen. She needs time to make good decisions. All right, more races to track. We will be back in a little bit with more analysis. All right, now here's a look at some of the other races in our area. First, the county's top cop is fighting to keep his job. Veteran Deputy Major Mitzi Johanknik challenged incumbent Sheriff John Urquhart and King County Sheriff Urquhart is trailing now by 10,000 votes. This is going to be a race to watch as we start to see more of the vote come in and be tallied. Now in the race for Tacoma's mayor, former Tacoma Urban League CEO Victoria Woodards is leading over businessman Jim Merritt. Right now, Woodard leads with 52% of the votes. The race for Everett's mayor is close. Right now, about 49 votes separate Judy Tuohy and Cassie Franklin. So coming up in our next half hour, Jenna Hanchard is going to have reaction from the Tacoma mayor's race, and Eric Wilkinson will have reaction from that really tight Everett mayoral race. Now to the east side in the race for State Senate District 45. Candidates are looking to replace Republican Andy Hill, who passed away last year. Manka Dingra versus Jin Young England. Dingra, the Democratic candidate, is leading with 55% of votes. King 5's Heather Graff joins us live from Dingra's headquarters tonight. Heather? Well, the party is starting to wind down here in Woodenville, but Democrats certainly feel like they have a lot to celebrate after that first drop of results show the Democratic candidate Manka Dingra with a big lead in this race that will determine the balance of power in Olympia. Now, I had a chance to speak to Manka Dingra just a few minutes ago about what a win in this special election in the 45th district would mean, not just for her and not just for Democrats in this state, but Democrats across the region. From a regional perspective, I think this is where I talk about environmental issues. I think making sure that the governors of all three states are committed to working on protecting our water, our air, and this will give them some leverage in doing that. And I really hope the wall of blue is something that we can protect our planet with. And tonight, Manka Dingra thanked her Republican opponent, a former congressional staffer and entrepreneur, Jin Young Lee England, for a hard-fought race, which is now officially the most expensive race in state legislative history. And you heard her mention that wall of blue. It's a phrase we heard a lot this evening and over the last few weeks leading up to this special election, because again, if this lead holds, it would mean the Democratic Party will now have complete control in Olympia. And that is in addition to Democrats already in control in Oregon and California. So many have said a win here in the 45th district would give the Democratic Party a sort of blue wall stretching along the West Coast and the ability 
to band together in opposing policies that might be introduced by the Trump administration. So we will wait for the final results. But for now, the Democratic candidate, Manka Dingra, feeling pretty good with the results so far in the 45th district. Live tonight in Woodenville, Heather Graff, King 5 News. Well, Heather touched on the national implications and the national interest in this race, uh, but we'll have you weigh in, Natalie and Marco. So we've been trying to analyze the significance of uh, Olympia turning completely blue, the West Coast being completely blue. As we've noted, Dingra, if she holds on to her lead, which is likely, she's going to have to run again next year. Mm -hmm. So you have experience in the state legislature in Olympia. What is the strategy of Democrats now that they have or they likely will have complete control what can they pass without uh, compromising themselves? I think it just comes down to basic core values on the budget and other things where they've had Republicans really push back on some environmental controls, some places on education spending and other places where the universities were told to tighten their belts and they might be able to say we can help more here. But in many ways, I think as you've pointed out, they're going to run a pretty tight ship. In one year, Dinkra is going to have to stand again for office and show a record. And if the Republicans would dream about painting her as helping extremist policies out of Olympia. And I don't think the Democrats will give them that. There is a lot of talk during this race on the Republican side about a potential capital gains tax, mm -hmm. which is something that Democratic lawmakers had pushed for in trying to solve the education funding challenges that mm -hmm. we have in this state. So do you anticipate that coming into play next year? It, it will be brought up. It will be voted on. I see a real challenge getting that through the House, Senate, and the governor's office. And on the national level, what is the significance? Already we're seeing statements from the DNC and mm -hmm. also, you know, this race considered a potential bellwether for 2018. Mm -hmm. So what are the national implications? I think the 45th district in Washington state is like a West Coast version of what happened in Virginia tonight with the governor's race. Purple places that swung blue after only a year with the president in office when really the president's party should be carrying towards, you know, at least some of the momentum from last November. Which definitely this race definitely energized the grassroots it seems from coast to coast all right we'll send it back to the desk Marco, Natalie, we'll be checking back in with you. Uh, these are only the top races in Western Washington, but there are more than 670 races around our region. From Pacific County to Chelan County, we have all the results on King5.com and the King5 mobile app. But don't go away because we're going to be tracking, tracking the election all night long.